Stay ahead of the game with our weekly economic insights, where we break down the latest financial news clearly and easily. Hi, I am Samya. In today's video, we'll discuss the latest domestic and international economic developments to equip you with the knowledge you need to make better financial decisions. Today, we have the latest updates from various sectors for you. First, we'll start by discussing the election's impacts on your personal finances and then the market's regulators push for better disclosures and checks for companies planning to go public. Next, we'll highlight the shift in the investment strategies towards startups, focusing more on returns. Additionally, we'll explain the Reserve Bank's new mobile app for retail investors to invest in government securities and RBI stands on latest repo rate. We'll also cover the market regulator's new rule for direct payout of securities to investors' account. Let us start with elections' impact on your finances. Elections are an important part of any democracy, but do they impact your personal finances? To shed some light on this, introducing our new segment called the Experts Take, where our experts will break down for you how it impacts your personal finances. Today we have Kalpesh Ashar, founder of Full Circle Financial Planners and Advisors, explaining this in details. This is a very uh, often asked question, and especially when uh, our elections have just recently concluded, and we all know how it's turned out to be. Uh, obviously, the first uh, reaction to it, yes, they have impacted uh, the personal finance of many people, albeit but for a very short time. And uh, I would like to say here that uh, although there is an impact of what's happening in the country through the elections or through the economic policies or uh, the GDP numbers and the taxation policies uh, on an individual's personal finance, uh, the textbook definition of personal finance is that it should be shielded by all the external factors. And uh, that is where this uh, little bit of a dilemma emerges that does election have an impact on personal finance. So I would like to make it very clear here that a solid financial plan is the one which does not get impacted by any external event. So obviously the economy of the country is the biggest part of it, the growth of the economy, the, the way your uh, you know profile grows is important. But the personal financial plan should be the one which has your goals in mind, your approach in mind and the way you have made your personal financial plan. Because if you have your cash flow, your income and expenses under control, you pay your taxes on time, you have your financial goals in place, you have the right protection in insurance, what you've taken and most importantly you have your investments in the right place with your risk return uh, calculations done for the long and the short term believe me guys that any external event will not hamper your personal financial plan moving on to the market regulators push for increased disclosures the Securities and Exchange Board of India has issued a 31-point advisory to investment bankers requiring higher disclosures and increased due diligence on companies planning to go public through initial public offerings. SEBI's new guidelines for IPO requires company going public to provide more detailed information. Offer documents must now include clear details about the operations, financial performance and potential risks. This ensures investors have all the necessary information to make informed decisions, enhancing investor protection. Moving on to the changing investment approach towards startup. The amount of startup funding remained flat at $3.9 billion in the first five months of this year, with a 40% increase in the average deal value compared to the last year. This shift towards writing bigger checks to a fewer startup reflects a change in investors' priorities, with a strong focus on return on investment. Investors favor startups with proven business model, strong customer acquisition and retention strategies, and the ability to generate sustainable revenue streams. This change in investment approach is driven by a desire for long-term profitability and viability as investors seek to allocate their capital more strategically. For consumer, 
This trend could lead to the emergence of more sustainable and customer-centric business models as startups strive to demonstrate their long-term viability and profitability potential. Now let's talk about RBI's new direct mobile app. The Reserve Bank of India has introduced a retail direct mobile app to simplify buying and selling government securities for retail investors. Now, investors can easily transact in government securities using their smartphones. The app is available on Google Play Stores for Android and Apple App Store for iPhones. It can also be downloaded via QR code. You just have to create an account with basic details like name, PAN, mobile number, email and residential address. Once you complete all the steps, you will become eligible to participate in primary auctions and trade in secondary market through your app. You can invest in government securities like sovereign gold bonds, government of India treasury bills, government of India dated securities and state development loans. This app offers a direct, efficient and transparent way for people to invest in government bonds. Let's look at the RBI's latest stance on repo rate. The Reserve Bank of India has projected a real GDP growth of 7.2% for financial year 25, an increase from 7%. Additionally, the country's foreign exchange reserves have reached a historic high of $651.5 billion as of May 31st. In the latest Monetary Policy Committee meeting, RBI Governor announced that the policy repo rate will remain unchanged at 6.5%, with a 4-2 majority decision. Consequently, the Standing Deposit Facility Rate stayed at 6.25%, while the Marginal Standing Facility Rate and the Bank Rate remained at 6.75%. For citizens, the interest rate on fixed deposit will likely stay favourable, providing stable returns for savers. The unchanged repo rate also suggests that the loan and mortgage rate will not increase, offering some relief to borrowers. Moving on to the market regulator's mandate for direct payout of securities. The Securities and Exchange Board of India has made it mandatory for securities received in payouts to be directly credited to the client's DMAT account from October 14th. Currently, these securities are pooled by the brokers and then credited to the respective client's account. This directive aims to ring fence investors' securities, ensuring they are not misused by stockbrokers. By mandating the direct transfer of securities to the investor's account, SEBI provides an additional layer of protection for their investments. This move underscores the regulator's commitment to safeguard investors' interest and maintaining the securities market integrity. It also highlights SEBI proactive efforts to enhance transparency and prevent potential misuse or manipulation of investors' holdings. Moving on to the RBI's proposal to allow Indian banks to lend overseas. In a significant move, the Reserve Bank of India has proposed to allow Indian banks to lend money to persons resident outside India. Additionally, the central bank has proposed permitting the opening of rupee accounts outside India by person outside India. These proposals align with the RBI's strategic plan for 2024-25, to which includes liberalizing the external commercial borrowing framework and implementing the Spectra project for ECBs and trade credits reporting and approval. By facilitating overseas lending and establishing rupee accounts abroad, the RBI aims to support businesses and individuals operating globally, providing them easier access to funds and more seamless cross-border transactions. This move is expected to streamline financial operations for Indian entities with global presence and enhance the country's economic integration with the rest of the world. Let us wrap up with this week's market performance. The BSE Sensex reached a new all-time high of 76,693.36 and the Nifty 50 index reached a new high closing at 23,290.15 even though there was a big 6% drop on June 4th. The market quickly bounced back in the first week of June. On June 6th, domestic institutional investors contributed a staggering Rs 17,030.3 crores through their net purchases, while foreign portfolio investors and foreign institutional investors followed suit, injecting Rs 13,969.15 crores into the market, reflecting the optimistic outlook among investors towards the Indian market's prospects. That's it for today. This week's Economic Insight taught us about the significant changes and plans across different sectors. Amidst all these changes, one thing remained the same. The financial world continues to evolve rapidly. So stay alert, stay informed and most importantly, stay focused on managing your money wisely.